we good. Here it comes again. Oh, so good. What's going on, everybody? I'm Nick DiVirgilio. Welcome back to Groovy Thursdays. We made it to groove number 17 and our Groovy Thursdays hang. And this week's groove is a super cool one. The song is called NY3. It's from the Robert Fripp record, Exposure, and the drummer on this song is the one and only, the amazing Narada Michael Walden. You may notice the new environment I'm sitting in. Well, this is not going to be the normal environment. It's just this week, I've had no choice. There's a ton going on. I'm getting ready to play on Cruise to the Edge with Randy McStein, Marco Miniman, and Mohini Day, also playing with Dave Kersner, and just with everything in the world happening at the same time. This was the only place I could do the talking portion of this video, and I wasn't going to miss a week of Groovy Thursday just because I couldn't sit in my studio and do the talking portion, right? So that's why I'm here. On to the groove. What an incredible drummer Narada Michael Walden was and still is to this day. I mean, he joined the Mahavishnu Orchestra back in the 70s when he was 21 years old. He replaced Billy Cobham. Then he went on to play with Jeff Beck and Weather Report, and he was just killing the fusion music scene back then. Then from that point, he took a really sharp left turn and started producing some of the biggest pop stars of all time. Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, uh, Barbara Streisand, and that just names a few people. His CV is really long and he's a very diverse musician. And now in 2022, he's come all the way back around and he's playing drums in Journey. So just goes to show you that the guy can do just about anything. He's a great writer, a killer producer, and in the 70s, he played on some of my favorite fusion records. Now, Robert Fripp's solo record, Exposure, is a pretty unique record. It has a lot of artists on the record. Along with Narada, Phil Collins plays drums and Jerry Murata. Daryl Hall from Hall & Oates sings on the record, and there is probably my favorite version of Peter Gabriel's Here Comes the Flood on that record. It really is a very interesting listen. If you've never heard it, you should check it out. And as always, if you like what's going on here at Groovy Thursdays, I ask that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with all your friends. I really appreciate all the comments and the great suggestions for future grooves. And with all that being said, let's get on to NY3. Let's rock. The groove is in 4-4 time, right around 130 BPM. And I'm focusing on the first eight bars of the song, the eight bar phrase that starts the tune because it's a really cool pattern between the hands and feet for two bars. Then it simplifies for two bars. We kind of just go to a regular backbeat, then re repeats the crazy part again, and then the simple two bars. And then from that point in the song, it's pretty much just like a slam and rock tune. It was pretty difficult figuring out these first two bars because the rhythm is really hectic and it's kind of hard to hear what's going on. But when I do try to learn something that's hard like this, and I suggest this for all of you out there, it's, it's good... It's a good way of going about it, is you break the rhythm into little chunks. Listen to it, figure out what the first chunk is, like the amount of notes. Okay, I'm just going to learn this part, right? And then figure that out, and then add a little bit to it, the next chunk, and the next chunk. And before you know it, you'll have whatever you're learning together. And it's just a nice, easy way to figure out something that's really difficult. The first three beats of bar one, you play every 16th note, no break. So that makes it a little bit easier, knowing that you have to hit all the notes. The cymbals and the kick drum, your cymbal hand and your kick drum, play all together. And in between every cymbal and kick drum hit, you have a ghost note. So you're just filling in between all those spaces. I was able to figure out this rhythm a lot easier by using this application called AnyTune Pro. It's one of those programs where you can slow the rhythm down, but not lose the pitch of the song. There are other programs out there, of course, that do the same sort of thing. But AnyTune Pro is just super intuitive, really easy to use. You can make loop points in there and really dial in on a very hard section and figure it out really slowly if you have to. I'm going to leave a link in the description below of the Mac version. And now there's also an Android version. And I just read that Windows is coming next. So if you are a Windows or an Android user, you'll get there soon. And at the very least, if you have an Android phone, you can put it on your phone because I have it on my iPhone as well as on my computer. And it's a great tool. I highly suggest it. So I slowed down the tempo in AnyTune Pro and I figured out what those first three beats were. I just listened to the hands first and listened for the pattern between the ride cymbal and the snare drum. The sticking for me, since my right hand is my lead hand, is like this. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. So it's very much just a rudimental pattern between your hands. Once you get the pattern together, add in your kick drum playing the same part as your lead hand, and you're well on your way to getting this pattern together. Now on beat four is where it starts to get a little bit tricky because there's a double on your kick drum right there, and it sounds like it would start right on beat four. But it's actually starting on the second 16th note 
of beat four. The four E and, four E and, that's where the double is. And then on the second hit of the double, you also hit a snare and your cymbal. And I find that snare and cymbal you play on the second kick drum hit of that double is really interesting to play at full speed. One thing to check out on the song is what the bass guitar is doing in these first two bars because it's locking in with the kick drum really nicely and that helps a lot to figure out the rhythm. In the second bar, there's another chunk to figure out, but it's where the rhythm starts in this little chunk that'll get you. It starts on the second 16th note of beat one, the one E, that's where it starts. And the sticking is actually just a double paradiddle. For me, it's right, left, right, left, right, right. And again, the kick drum and the cymbal, your lead hand, are playing together. Then you skip the last 16th note of beat two and play a fat accent right on beat three with your kick drum, snare, and cymbal. The second bar ends in such a cool way. It starts with a floor tom hit on the last 16th note of beat three. Then you have a snare right on the first note of beat four, immediately followed by a crash with your kick drum and your crash cymbal on the second 16th note of beat four. And that is the coolest part, where that crash cymbal lands. I find it to be very powerful. I got a great comment on one of my other videos where I was asked to show me playing the groove slowed down. And since this one is really difficult, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Here we go. I hope that helped you hear the rhythm and the accents a little easier. At that point, you play two bars of groove. You can hear it in the song. The guitars and the bass are playing long sustained notes and the drums are keeping time with a fill getting prepared to play two bars of that crazy rhythm again. When you get to bar five, it's the same as bar one, so the craziness is the same. It's the second bar of the craziness. That's a little bit different. You're not doing that same kick, cymbal, and snare drum pattern. You're basically doing more of a fill getting into those two bars of time before you get on to cracking through the rest of the song. Also, I want to point out where the crash is. The crash accent is in bar six. In bar two, that crash happened on the second 16th note of beat four, which makes it weird and really cool sounding. But on bar six, that crash happens right on beat four, the first beat of beat four. I tried to map out the drum fill as close as I could from listening to the record, but I think in that little bit there, you could play whatever fill you want as long as you hit that crash there right on beat four because it's accelerating you in to those next two bars. And that's the most important thing. Now here is those second two bars, bars five and six, slowed down for you. I know this groove might sound a little bit hard, but really it's just patterns. Figure out those chunks first, then add to that and add to that. And before you know it, you'll have the two bars or whatever you're trying to figure out together. It makes it a lot easier. And then if you get a program like AnyTune Pro, you can slow it down and hear those chunks slowly. You can hear exactly what the cymbals or the snare or any other part of the drum kit is doing. It makes it so much easier. Also, a very key thing to remember here is once you get those patterns down and you got the groove under your hands, and it's starting to feel good or normal, is to play it with passion and attitude. Listen how Narada plays that groove at the top of the song. It's frenetic. It's like, it's just passionate. He's, he's hitting the snare drum really hard on those accents. It feels and sounds amazing. So when you play it at home, definitely give it that passion and attitude. After you've figured it out, of course, but then really give it some life. It's passion and attitude when it comes to crazy rhythms like this one. And there you go, groove number 17 in our Groovy Thursdays Hang. The song was NY3 from the Robert Fripp record Exposure with the great drumming of Narada Michael Walden. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I look forward to seeing you all here next week for groove number 18. Cheers, everybody.